Hey everyone, this is Pastor Jawan, Senior Pastor of Faith Life Church. I'm so excited about tonight's budgeting seminar sponsored by Faith Life Church, Food For You, and our FEED initiative. We've heard your desire. So over a several month period, those that were coming to Food For You, we had a special team asking questions and taking surveys about how Faith Life Church can impact you, your family, and the community. The overwhelming response was for a financial budgeting seminar, and that is our purpose tonight. We are bringing you a financial budgeting seminar that's going to help impact your life. So I want you to make sure you cut out some time tonight, get into a quiet space, and make sure you take good notes and apply everything that you're going to be taught tonight. Also, in the YouTube links, you're going to see documents for the budgeting seminar that's going to help you navigate throughout the entire budgeting seminar. Again, it's gonna be exclusively on YouTube. So again, let's get ready, sit back, gather your family, um, take some good notes. It's truly gonna be a blessing to you. On behalf of myself, my wife, Pastor Keisha, and the entire Faith Life Church community, we wanna say keep living by faith. And now let's enter into the budgeting seminar. Welcome and thank you for making the decision to invest the time to build a firm financial foundation for you and your family. During our time together, I'm going to discuss budgeting and purposeful ways to reach your budget goals. So what is a budget anyway? A budget is simply a plan for your expected income, as well as expenses for a set amount of time. I like to think of a budget as an opportunity to practice good stewardship over what has been entrusted to you. And once you have a budget, how do you maintain that budget? I'm glad you asked. When you think of maintaining a budget, I want you to consider the words budget to zero because your money should have a mission and your profit should always have a purpose. When you think of the words budget to zero, it simply means you're going to ensure that all your sources of income, subtracting all expenses will equal zero to maximize all of your money and ensure that your profit fulfills its purpose. So what's on the budget? There are specific line items that should be included in your budget that includes income from all resources. It includes investments and it includes expenses. And I'll give you some examples of each. Income resources can include work, a business, income earned from the sale of products, and or services. The expenses line items can include household expenses, such as household, mortgage, rent, supplies, personal items, childcare, education, entertainment, food, healthcare, insurances, internet, telephone, travel, memberships, and utilities. Another really important line item is miscellaneous, and I'll share more about that in a few moments. The amount that you allocate for each line item on your budget is going to depend on the past spending habits of your family. Now, if you don't know that, then you can also take a look at local or national averages, or you can do a projected budget, meaning what you hope to earn as income or what you plan to receive for your income, and then what you believe or anticipate the expenses will be for you and your immediate family at that time. There are some standard or suggested line items and so one example is shelter should not be more than 28%. At the time of this recording, we're at February of 2022. So shelter should not be higher than 
28% of your pre-tax monthly gross income. I mentioned miscellaneous line item. And at the time of this recording, the miscellaneous line item can be about 5% of your income. Now that is to cover expenses that may happen unexpectedly. It does not have to mean an emergency. It could be a last minute school project or something similar to that. Building in a miscellaneous line item can help to keep your budget intact. Now, when you update your budget, you can make the necessary adjustments in terms of projected expenses. The goal is to start. Once you've started one budget, it'll become easier to update your budget to decrease expenses, increase income and investments. And the last line item or category, I wanted to highlight some details of investments. Some of the items can include 401k, IRA, stocks, bonds, or mutual funds. Those are all examples of investments. Those items are listed as investments because it is anticipated that you receive a return on your investments. Now that we talked about what a budget is and some of the line items, Let's talk about budget goals. So a very important goal is debt elimination. Equally important is wealth increase, savings increase, investment increase, and a low debt to income ratio. And five ways to actually reach those budget goals includes understanding that money is a system. I encourage you to continue investing the time to learn that system and then work that system to benefit you and your family. And some ways to reach your budget goals includes completing a talent inventory. A talent inventory is identifying what talents you possess what talents have been instilled in your immediate family, the people who live in your household? What are the talents entrusted to each person? And once you have created a talent inventory, identify what business can these talents be related to that can increase the amount of income we have coming in and eliminate the debts or the expenses that we have going out of our household. It's very important to include each family member in this process because then they'll be invested in reaching those budget goals. I want to discuss budget implementation. Once you've done the work to identify everything you want to include in your budget. It is important to schedule budget meetings. And a great way to have your budget planning meeting is to think about this. It's an opportunity to share your success and build accountability. It's an opportunity to set the goal and celebrate the MAC goals. What goals have you already achieved as an individual or as a family? A really important way to make it fun is to choose a theme day. For me, I prefer Financial Friday. It's the weekend, so it's an opportunity to reflect on the past week and prepare for the upcoming week. Some of the activities that can be completed during your budget planning meeting is creating charts like progress charts to look at where you started, to appreciate where you are and the progress you've already made, and to project future budgets as to where you want you and your family to be. I firmly suggest getting the investment of each family member. And if there are children involved, 
even consider maybe allowing them to create artwork that goes with the budget progress charts or encourage them to create a goal, something that they want to achieve, and then discuss how you can achieve those individual personal goals as a family. Because when one family member wins, the entire family wins. And it is an opportunity to have a built-in way to celebrate small victories on the way to bigger victories. It's a way to celebrate small bills being paid in full on the way to the larger bills being paid in full. That's very, very important to appreciate the process and the progress. It's also important to consider budgeting principles. I like to share the principles of saving, sewing, and spending. Each principle is vital in your budgeting process. The saving, the purpose of saving is to help reach your budget goals. Savings can be planned for personal items, personal travel goals, holidays, events, family items, household items, or even something you want to do in your community as a family. The sewing principle is essential to your budget goals for several reasons. It has multiple levels of benefits. When you sew, you help accelerate the pace at which you grow. Sewing is literally an opportunity to help either a local church or a local organization reach a mission or goal that's beneficial for your community. And the third benefit of sewing is that it actually brings down the amount of taxable income. And I'll explain. When you sow into a tax deductible organization and you itemize your deductions, that taxable amount comes down. It makes a really, really big difference at tax time. And so consider it as a way to help move purpose-driven missions forward as well as benefiting you when you go to prepare your taxes. So I like to share all the sides of saving, sewing, and spending. And so let's talk about the spending. Now you've done the work to get the budget together, to identify the line items, to save, to pay off debts, Spending involves actually rewarding yourself. It's an opportunity to reward yourself for reaching goals, for sharing your talents. If you found a way to tie your talents to a business product or business service, you want to reward yourself because life is a beautiful journey. And when you budget properly, it allows you to enjoy the rewards on your journey through life. When you properly budget, it also allows you to enjoy celebrating debt freedom, which frees up more time and more money to do the long-term goals and to live the long-term dreams. So consider it that way. It's a new mindset shift when you consider the importance and purpose of a budget. I also encourage you to celebrate when debts are paid in full, celebrating even the start of your journey can be encouragement to keep going and to stay focused on your budget and meeting your budget goals and implementing those principles that I discussed earlier. One way that I celebrate, I celebrate small bills being paid in full. I celebrate large bills being paid in full. I even celebrate debt forgiveness because that's a big deal. And so one way I celebrate is the music. I literally have a financial playlist of songs that are great motivators as it relates to my financial goals. 
and planning for the next level of increase. I play those songs as often as possible to stay focused and motivated on my budget goals. Another important way to celebrate is to actually speak out loud what you want to see happen in your financial life. And what I mean by that is I declare and decree an agreement with the word of God as it relates to the promises of God for my life and for my finances. And I encourage you to do the same for yourself and for your family. You will receive a bonus package that'll have a list of scriptures, declarations, and decrees that you can make personal and confess over yourself and your family. I hope that you enjoy your journey building a firm financial foundation for yourself and your family. I thank you for your time viewing this video. Continue kingdom blessings of success and progress in every area of your life. Hey everybody, this is Pastor Jerwan back with you. My prayer is that this financial budgeting seminar was truly a blessing to you and your family. If you were unable to download the documents from tonight's seminar, just send us an email at visitflc at gmail.com. Again, that's visitflc at gmail.com and we'll get that right to you. Well, our purpose is to provide powerful seminars like this to help you live your best life. So if you know some similar seminars that you're looking for that will impact your family and community, please let us know. Give us your feedback so that way we can truly be a blessing to you. On behalf of myself, my wife, Pastor Keisha, and the entire Faith Life Church community, we would just want to let you know that we love you and we encourage you to check out our broadcast every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., Thursday nights at 7 p.m., and on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Well, again, I hope that you enjoyed yourself, and like always, have a super productive day. God bless you.